My Converse are uh, split, they have been split since the UK and it rained really bad last night so where are my Vibrams? I'm wondering if I should ditch my Converse but I need to check the weather first just in case because if these get wet, I mean they dry quickly but if these get wet I can't go back out again so it pays to have two pairs uh, but I'll think about it on our way back from the Red Square. <laughs> I'm coming out on the green line and it actually tells you intersecting other main lines that are attached to it also the reference in the context of the street level and it's in English and the ring that's going round indicates everything to within five minutes walk post office, tea house, theatre, department store, library This is as close as I can, this is as close as I can get to St Basil's Cathedral this is a part of the Red Square in Moscow. There's a festival on, there's a couple of orchestras coming to visit. It's like a five day event. Bad timing with the festival, because I can't get in. Bad timing yesterday with the rain, so I couldn't get around. But I still have enjoyed my time in Moscow. I would love to visit again, bring Ray with me, because I know she would want to see the museums here especially. But look, look at this, for example, look at this scaffolding. This is the netting for the scaffolding. That's how much pride they have for their city. Even the scaffold netting has to look beautiful. I can't overstate enough how much I love it in Moscow here. I know I've said it before in this episode. I really do. I really wish I could have stayed longer. But now I have to go. I'm going to Vladimir. I'll be arriving in Vladimir at four. My train is at two because I'm there for like 14 hours. Then I catch my next train, which is the long train journey to Yekaterinburg. I slept really well both nights. It looks basic, but I enjoyed it here. It's in a pretty good location as well. So it's convenient on the fifth line, the brown line, the circle line that goes around. A little bit of money in here and the rest of our money. If you do want fast Wi-Fi, that's the network I used and that's the price I paid. And I have 33 minutes to get out of my room. I'm actually pretty hungry. This was going to be train food, but now it's bedroom food. I bought a brand new umbrella. I can't find it now. They give you free slippers by the way. I'm transferring GoPro footage to the laptop. Recharge it for my next leg of the journey. So, so I'm at the uh, train station and it turns out that I'm actually late for my train. And if I want to get another train, a quicker train to stay on time, then I have to go to a different train station. But uh, there was a member of public who s stopped me and uh, we were in the process of buying a new ticket and the station manager has actually come up and uh, he says he can give me a discount because I already have a ticket and I pay like half for a normal, uh, a normal ticket instead. I thought my train was leaving at, at two, but it's actually leaving at 11. Fucked up, fucked up on the first journey, but it's okay because the train journey is only like two hours anyway. And I have to double check. This is a lesson learned. I double check all the other ones, and I'm probably gonna pay like twenty pounds. I have money. No. Okay, I'll use my card. It's okay. They look like they're distressed when I said I can use money. That's the train number, yeah? Okay. To Vladimir, yeah? Okay. Okay. 
Thank you very much for your help. Bye bye. As you can see, there's barely any English on there. Probably only my name is in English. Uh, you can see here the train number, the 706, the date and the time. We can make that out. And then whatever 16C means must mean the carriage. And that's the departure list. Hi. Oh, I forgot it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Where's Rio when I need her? I forget everything. Okay, so you can see the 706. In English, it does say class, destination, the departure time, but it doesn't give you a track number yet. That's the old ticket. That's the new ticket. Well, I have an hour and 40, 20 minutes to kill, and then I go to the mall. How is that no calories? Hi, uh, 200 grams of this, and 100 grams Every single time you enter a public place, like a train station or an airport now in Russia, uh, there's always security uh, doing low-level back sweeps because there was a terrorist attack in St. Petersburg, so there's heightened security everywhere. While I wait for my train, I thought I'd review the Airbnb host. Accuracy, yeah, communication, check-in, value. It was expensive for what it was, so I'd say four. Location was good, nothing to worry and now I'll get my feedback everything was great thank you okay <laughs> short but Russian sweet it is 1 15 and I still don't know what platform my train is at but the 10 to 3 has a platform number and so does another train at 7 o'clock it's not weird this is wagon 8 and I want wagon 16 it's 15 This one is me. Hello. Okay. Yani Gavayo Haruski Paka. Okay. Okay, this side. Okay, okay. Thank you. There's my seat. The attendants stand by their wagons and everybody else is uh, having a cigarette. <laughs> well, that's the first of five trains done. Welcome to Vladimir. So you see these two coming up now, they're actually Spanish and they actually asked me if I speak Spanish and I speak a little bit of Spanish and we have this full-blown conversation in Spanish. For some reason they've been told through the translation device that Yekaterinburg is the place to visit so they've got to meet somebody here and then, then they're going back to Colombia. Sorry they're Spanish speakers but they're from Colombia. And then they're going back. How random is that? Like we caught a plane, uh, we caught a train, and they were in the middle of Russia, two Colombians just visiting somebody, and they're just hiking and sightseeing around here. So weird. Anyway, I don't have far to travel. Railway station is there, and my apartment is here. Lada.
we're getting close. Wow, check that out. I think that's where I'm staying. Somewhere in there, it's the same shape there. Hi. A bedroom which is absolutely ready. So you have all bed linen already done. Okay. In here and the towels you will find on the desk. If you need anything else, just... So this is the key. You need it Hello. Uh, for the first door. It's upper lock. Upper lock. Upper lock. How cold can it get in the winter? Oh, mine is 30. It's 30. Okay. 30. <laughs> All last winter it was like minus 25, 28, 30. And everybody said it was mild. mild. Okay. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm Dutch. You're from, okay. I'm from Madrid. Okay, I didn't think you were Russian. Oh, yes. I was trying to figure out Finland, oh. Sweden. <laughs> no, but you know, I'm living, I've been living here for uh, 18 years. Yeah. Okay. Know. So here you'll find everything and some vegetarian stuff as well. So, okay. Uh, coffee and tea and herb coffee and hmm. herbal tea and all these things. So if you can use a GoPro, you can use this one. Okay. This house is so cool. Here's the living room, there's the bedroom, here's the double door mechanism for when it gets cold in the winter, here's the bathroom, that's the super fast Wi-Fi, and say hello to the kitchen. This is the view. That's a naked lady playing with herself. It even has better air conditioning than my old apartment. It's the Russian TV that I'm not going to watch. That dude over there is holding a baby tractor in his arm. Baby tractor. How cool is that? I have to wake up at 5.20 in the morning to catch my 5 to 7 train. I've prepared pat lunches because tomorrow it's going to be a 27 hour train journey. Everything is charging. So hopefully I can be as prepared as possible and I don't know who I'm going to be sleeping with as in the sleeper carriage I'm in holds four people and I'm just one quarter of the four. See you in the morning. Thank you for watching the video. I just wanted to add a few things about the video uh, just to give you a little bit of extra perspective and insight in the travels up to this point. One of them was wasn't the Russian man at the train really helpful? Like he had the patience to deal with me, even though I didn't speak his language. And, that, and he said something to me about where I'm supposed to sit. And I didn't understand that at the time. And I'm like, huh? Which is such a lowbrow sort of response. Like I'm putting it on him. The onus is on him to explain it again. And that was kind of a bit rude to me. But he handled it really well. If he did that in the UK, the UK train conductors would just sigh or tut or something so the russian train staff are very polite the other thing i wanted to add is that this video i think suffers slightly i know some of you are going to say oh you're too self-critical or whatever but i walked into this episode with an idea to set up more interesting shots visually and you have to take this we said, I said this at the beginning that I'll be live streaming and making YouTube videos, but I can't do both at the same time. It's very hard and I try to, and there, are, there is actually a lot more video of me trying to film this scene as I go around the Red Square. In the end, you just get me standing outside the, uh, the cathedral. That's obviously a consequence of doing two things at once. And I have to lean on the periscopes, or you have to watch the periscopes in order to get more of the context of my journey. So sorry about that. But when I went to Vladimir, which isn't worth going to, by the way, when I went to Vladimir, I'm wearing just my Vibrams. I don't have the Converse at that point. I binned them because they were split. As I was periscoping, I was accosted by some kids and they were shouting at me. I don't know what they're talking about. And I felt justified in a sense, like, I'm glad I didn't bring more gear with me 
while I'm trying to set up a YouTube video because a gang of kids is kind of dangerous and you only need one to distract you and then they all just pilfer uh, your gear. At the time, I was only live streaming, so I only had the phone and it was in my hand, so that was fine. And if you do anything in retaliation or you hold one of them, or anything like that, they might have a big brother and then you've got an escalating situation in your hands where you don't speak the local language. So I really did try to stay low key while I was traveling but you've got to be sort of street smart about some of this you can't just walk around and say hey i'm doing it for youtube and uh accept the fact without any consequences thanks for watching welcome to the canned outro video this will now be at the end of all my videos just to remind you of a few things because it seems that you don't know how to use youtube i mean i'm just watching other youtubers and they keep doing this and i'm thinking what people don't know how to subscribe to a channel Okay, well, I better get tell my audience to subscribe to the channel. What? They don't know how to like a video? Okay, oh, oh, I guess I'll have to ask you to like the video that you just watched. And uh, what? I've got to follow. The, ask you to, for a follow on Twitter. Uh, I don't do follow for follow, by the way. Uh, so I guess follow me on Twitter. Uh, and if you really liked my video and you didn't want to click the adverts uh, to show your appreciation, you can just uh, donate to my Ko-Fi account if you want to show some uh, to show some love, and you can buy me a coffee. Thank you very much. I actually am in the process of replacing this. I want to buy a brand new Mac, and then I can work a little bit faster, and hopefully put out more YouTube videos. So that's what you'll be donating to. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.